was an astronaut scholar and still am, and now I am an astronaut. I'll start by saying that once in my life, I have shared brunch with John Glenn. I guess started. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Once in my life, I have stood under a space shuttle orbiter as it was prepared for launch. <laughs> Once in my life, I have shaken Sally Ride's hand. What we're doing right now, Rick is rewinding the VTR and setting it up for the, uh, the beginning of the sequence. These experiences happen once and will only happen once. And they happened, not as you may think, because I'm an astronaut. They happened because I was an astronaut scholar. In fact, the very experience of having this honor of being here today with the people who have inspired myself and countless others is because I was fortunate enough to be an astronaut scholar. I would like to thank the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation for having me speak here this evening, and I would like to humbly congratulate all the inductees to the Astronaut Hall of Fame, both past and future. In preparing for this event, I enlisted the help of my mom. And after some photo album research, we determined that my family and I visited Kennedy Space Center in 1989. I was 10. My whole family, all four kids, saw the sights and did the tour. And for me, it was better than Disney World. Not just because this was the only place where my parents would actually let me get something from the gift shop. In fact, I came home with so many posters of space that the bedroom wall, my bedroom walls would never be the same. They were covered with images of my heroes and images of the space program. A small town North Carolina girl's dream of becoming an astronaut finally had a face. Fast forward 10 years. Around 2000, when I was told that I would be nominated by North Carolina State University to receive the astronaut scholarship, I was honored beyond measure. I was excited. I was nervous. And I was ridiculously busy. I was in the third of what would be five years getting three degrees. A bachelor's in electrical engineering, bachelor's in physics, and master's in electrical engineering. I'll never forget sitting down to one of my university computer labs to write my application statement knowing that it was support sponsored by the very astronauts that I had been looking up to for years I wanted it to be perfect I remember writing the phrase it's the stars I'm after receiving that scholarship in 2000 was just the start there was this bonus that I had no idea about back when I was just pinching myself to be writing an essay that these people would be reading it turned out the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation hosted a weekend where scholars were invited to come to Kennedy. I would be meeting the heroes from the posters on my bedroom walls. I would not just have a family tour, but a VIP tour to the places that I held most sacred. And after that first trip, I felt closer to my dreams than ever. I returned to Kennedy Space Center in 2003 when the Astronaut Scholars Weekend had grown to include a technical presentation. I presented the work that I was doing at the time in Astrophysics Instrumentation Lab at NASA Goddard. And I learned about the other work of other astronaut scholars, and it was very impressive. Mars research at JPL, innovative entrepreneurial ventures. It was so refreshing to meet other people working passionately. So, Scholars Weekends aren't the only way that the Foundation continues its lifelong support of scholars. A couple of years later, it was publishing what they call the Astronaut Spotlight publication. And at the time, I was finishing up that winter over at the South Pole. And they asked to highlight the work I was doing. It was another act of encouragement that helped me to know that the path that I was on was the right one. In 2011, I came back to Kennedy chasing another dream. It was the launch of the Juno spacecraft, and it was carrying an instrument called JEDI that I was fortunate enough to be an engineer on. From right out there, I watched something that I helped create launch on a journey to Jupiter. I brought with me my then 12-year-old baby sister, 
to watch her eyes light up as she watched her first rocket launch. She was so enthralled with our time here at Kennedy that she actually chose to write about it in a school essay about the experience that most changed her life. In 2014, I came back in a role that I never thought I would be in in these hallowed grounds. I was an astronaut candidate traveling with my cadre. At the KSC Visitor Center, we saw Atlantis up close and we rode that tour bus track that I had been lucky enough to be on a few times thanks to Astronaut Scholars Weekends. Today, I come as a graduated astronaut, but more importantly, to share the story about how profoundly the ripple effects of encouragement can manifest themselves. The same ideals that drive foundations to inspire future leaders are the same ideals that are behind the human spaceflight program itself. They're the same ideals that make the people of NASA work so hard towards our next de destination, Mars. Those ideals, that doing something greater than yourself raises us all up to be the best people in the world that we can be. That the common goal of exploration has momentous power to inspire. It's easy to put a price on the amount of a scholarship, but you can't put a price on a young woman shaking Sally Ride's hand before she lived at the South Pole, before she developed a detector on its way to Jupiter, before she applied to be an astronaut. You can't put a price on seeing a rocket launch, and you can't put a price on encouragement from your most respected heroes. Thank you.